So good morning and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Lisa and today's webinar is called Get Set for 2021. Our aim is to support you through the challenges ahead. I have a couple of housekeeping bits to mention to begin with. Firstly, if you have any questions, can you please use the Q&A function and not the chat? My colleague Suzanne will be monitoring questions and we will run through these at the end. The session itself is expected to last 45 minutes. If you have any questions which are not answered here, or if you prefer to speak to one of the team directly, our contact details will appear at the end of the presentation. Or you may wish to visit our website, which is www.stca.co.uk, where you will find contact details as well as specific areas and information regarding COVID-19 and everything else we have to offer as a business. Many businesses will have been hopeful for a fresh start in 2021 after the difficult events of last year. However, we now find ourselves in a new national lockdown, which has required many owners to focus on the day to day financial health of their company once again. The ever changing nature of trade, regulations, restrictions and financial support makes it more important than ever to have a clear understanding of your business and its figures and also highlights the importance of having a trusted accountant and advisor. While it is important to consider past performance, it is equally important to look to the future as you prepare to survive and hopefully succeed in the months ahead. As you plan for 2021, you must have your finger on the financial pulse of your company so that you can remain agile and adapt your plans to meet current demands. The businesses that saw the most significant success during lockdown in 2020 were those that were able to pivot and change quickly to find new work or to improve revenue from in-demand services. To help you get set for 2021, we are going to look at five key elements that businesses need to consider. These points will cover how you can protect and forward plan for your business, regardless of the pandemic, so that you can maintain financial health. By understanding and knowing the, the areas that I'm going to cover today, it will allow you, if necessary, to have a flexible strategy, which is something that you may need to consider in 2021. Today's session will not cover the various financial support measures, loans or furloughs in but our team at Seymour Taylor are standing by to assist you should you require any support. The first matter that I'm going to look at is real-time accounting. The world is changing rapidly and nowhere is this clearer than the advancement of financial technology, in particular, cloud accounting. For many years, we've been assisting a wide range of businesses with real-time online accounting via the cloud, helping them to implement useful systems and apps that give them a greater insight into their financial health. The pandemic has made this particularly relevant and useful for those businesses who have not yet had time to implement changes, as the remote working environment has made this now a necessity rather than a choice. Many businesses may be concerned about the investing in uncertain times, but if the last year has demonstrated anything, it's that those that innovate have a higher chance of success, and we have certainly seen many of our clients reap the benefits of our expertise in this area. Implementing real-time accounting via the cloud platforms available and using expertise of a team allows you to keep track of every single transaction in and out of your business and identify areas that are doing well and those that require you to make some changes. This is essential in the current climate. By empowering your business with this information, you should be better equipped to make quicker informed decisions. And don't forget the old adage, time is money is still true, especially in the hectic modern work environment. To give you an example of the impact of real-time accounting, Recent research from Xero, which is one of the UK's leading cloud accountancy platforms, found that most small businesses considered real-time accounting from their accountant as an essential part of their survival, with 45% of owners saying that advice and information from their accountant is more important to them than ever before. Highlighting the importance of technology alongside the expertise of their trusted advisors, 63% said that the systems employed by their accountant had been essential which is why it's not surprising that a third of SMEs revealed that the pandemic led their accountant to adopt new forms of cloud-based technology. There are many benefits to real-time accounting, which are worth exploring for your business. Profit and loss. Businesses often see the most significant benefit of real-time accounting data in their income statement or profit and loss reports. Using the latest technology, you can see how you are doing and what your overall profitability is like at the click of a button, day and night, anywhere in the world. Using the platforms that are out there and associated applications, which allow you to automate much of the data collection and collation tasks, you can compare previous periods, check different channels and compare how each is doing against one another. Unlike traditional accounting, there is no waiting for month end. All your information is there 24 hours a day, just waiting to be accessed when needed. 
Having total oversight of your business at all times is a powerful tool that can help when trying to maintain financial health or seek out new sources of funding. Running a business can be challenging, especially given the current restrictions that many businesses face. It can be difficult at times to determine the success of your goods or services until you receive a regular set of accounts, which for some businesses could be some time after a sale has occurred. By using real-time accounting data, you can instantly see the impact of any changes you make. There's no need to wait for the figures. They are there right in front of you and can be shared with other key stakeholders, allowing you to adapt your strategy to, co to your current set of circumstances. For example, you may feel that a particular selling platform is working well for you as you're receiving most of your orders from it. But in reality, you're making very little or no profit once you take into account all the costs involved, or it may reveal that you are undervaluing that product or service. By filtering and comparing the information within one system, using real-time accounting data for each separate sales channel against the costs to source goods, you can keep a track of your margins to identify areas to improve and channels to expand or remove as needed. If you need to add other costs to your product cost prices, such as landed costs, then the accuracy for margins and profit per item takes you to a whole new level. Equally, by having a handle on your finances, you can spot areas of potential profitability or see trends that could dictate an issue within the company. Being agile and acting on intelligence about your business will help you to keep on the right track and may help to identify new areas of potential growth in the future. Not only that, but real-time accounting will give you peace of mind and confidence that any time, day or night, you'll have a true up-to-date reflection on your business accounts. Each company's use of data will vary depending on the nature of their industry and the requirements of the business. Similarly, how they implement real-time accounting and how much you invest will also differ. Here are some of the main considerations to help company, companies implement real-time data initiatives. Firstly, start simple and start small. If you're new to real-time accounting, you may want to do some research to learn what solutions will work well for you and implement them one at a time to mon monitor the benefits of each service. Number two, expanding the source of data used. Explore potential uses, not only of the data available internally, but also of data available externally. Developing new strategies. Make sure you are effectively using leading edge analytic techniques and technologies when implementing real-time accounting. You want to make sure that you build strong data governance and quality infrastructure to ensure data integ integrity and quality. And finally, seek advice. You must work with those who have experience integrating real-time accounting and who understand the various cloud platforms and applications that are on the market. As we've mentioned, our team of real-time accounting specialists can help businesses to find solutions suited to their needs. We take time to get to know clients and understand how their business operates so that we can find systems and approaches that are effective. The second area that I'm going to cover is the role of management accounts. You may think that management accounting is something that only applies to big businesses. This is a common misconception. Management accounting reports can provide vital insights into a business's performance, but they are often underutilized by many smaller companies. While many business owners make full use of basic financial reports to get an idea of the financial health of their business, fewer invest in management accounts regularly, which means that they may not get a full or accurate picture of their figures. Management accounting is a different type of accounting from financial accounting or bookkeeping. They're closely related, but it's more concerned with providing financial information that helps managerial decisions. A management accounting report gives specific insight into your operations and allows you to judge your business performance over a given time period. They would typically contain an overview of your cash flow, details of how much money has moved in and out of your business, profit and loss for the same period, information on your assets, liabilities and the equity of your business, and detailed data about your receivables and payables for the given time frame. By undertaking regular management accounts over various periods, owners can compare their financial performance and find trends that could help them with the future direction of their business. While it was once the responsibility of an individual to collate and pour over this data, nowadays many online platforms can be used to assist in the creation of new reports. To give you a better appreciation of their value, I will outline what most reports contain. At the top, you will see an executive summary of your chosen period. This will show your profitability, income, and some general performance measures, along with a simple overview of your financial information. 
While some small businesses run quarterly reports, monthly ones can also be more beneficial to your business. In the cash summary section, you will see a summary of the cash flows in your business, how much money is leaving and how much is coming in. This is vitally important during times like these where cash flow is often constrained. In the profit and loss report, this is always a big part of the management accounting report, as it provides details for how much money you have gained or lost during a period. The balance sheet will provide you with a financial statement, statement detailing all of your assets, liabilities and capital at the current point of generating the report. In the age receivables, it's a mini report which will show any sales invoices or receivables that are yet to be paid to your company during the period. For the age payables, this report will show you how much money you currently owe, along with a time scale on how long you've been owing that amount. Other discretionary information. Most cloud-based accounting software, such as Xero, allow you to incorporate a wide range of information in addition to that highlighted here. Seeing all the information you receive from a management accounting report is one thing, but understanding how to use it effectively is another matter entirely. This is where the advice of an advisor can help. By working with an accountant, you can make timely changes that have a meaningful impact, which could help you to lower expenses, modify your budget, improve profitability and plan for the future. The third area that I'm going to look at is cash management. As businesses look to manage the latest challenges of COVID-19 in the coming weeks and months, it is vitally important that they maintain good cash flow to ensure that they remain viable and can trade. Cash flow is key for the survival of every business and is a focus during normal trading considerations. However, now, as many businesses have been disrupted by the coronavirus outbreak, causing some of them to look to close their doors and others to adopt new ways of working, Finding ways to manage cash flow has never been more important. To manage cash flow effectively, businesses need to be able to forecast how they will perform. A well-prepared forecast can help to predict sales performance and estimate costs and spends. Armed with this information, a business will be able to make important decisions in the knowledge that, that, it, that it can react effectively. As a business, <laughs> as a minimum, a business should look to compile a 30, 60 or 90 day cash flow forecast. Longer forecasts can be useful, but only up to a point. Be aware that with long range forecasts, they may be less accurate as they will not be able to take into consideration future changes to business rules or the economy. The first step to creating a forecast should be a sales forecast. This is the starting point of a profit and loss forecast, which can then be used to create a comprehensive cash flow forecast. A sales forecast will include an estimate of how much you expect to sell in the future, normally broken down by month. To create these estimates, you should look at your previous year's sales figures to see whether there are any trends or seasonal variations. You also need to take into consideration the introduction of new products or services and the expected market for these. Additionally, if you plan to make more sales in a particular area, build that into your forecast. This should include any new contracts or retained work that is anticipated during this period. At this stage, do not include any tax on the products or services sold, as this will be incorporated later into the cash flow forecast. Step two is a profit and loss forecast. This combines your business's income and its cost to give you a projected profit figure for the future. By preparing this, you should be able to estimate how much tax a business will be liable for, understand the costs of launching new products, and gain an indication of loss leading products and or the first indications of negative cash flow. Be sure to include the costs in the month that you incur them rather than the month that you pay for them. All cash flow forecasts are prepared based on payment dates, but a profit and loss forecast must be prepared based on when you incur the costs. At step three, at this stage, you can estimate and include any VAT costs into the forecast. However, large one off costs should not be included until the final cash flow. Step four in using the information gathered, you should now be able to build up an idea of cash flow within the business and prepare an accurate cash flow forecast that takes into consideration sales, profits and costs. Drawing up these forecasts for your business should not take too long, but it doesn't hurt to seek professional assistance to ensure that forecasts are accurate and so that you have the advice to act on the information you receive. With the advent of the latest cloud accounting technology, it's never been easier to effectively and accurately forecast cash flow. An important element of a healthy cash flow is the credit control process. 
Smaller businesses in the UK have historically struggled to recover payments, especially from larger clients. To help, the government has tried to introduce new, new legislation aimed at larger businesses. However, in many cases, it has lacked the bite to be effective. It is therefore often up to small business owners to improve their credit control on their own, especially during this difficult period. To help, we've outlined some of the steps that businesses should consider taking in the coming months to improve credit control. Firstly, create or review existing credit control procedures. Businesses should have a clear and coordinated procedure for credit control, which is followed for every sale it processes. It should establish a realistic timetable, including all the stages that need to be completed by various team members within your business, and outline credit terms that should be based on the needs of the business. Once these elements are in place, a business can then prepare a process for chasing payments, including a schedule for sending reminders, including an initial notice of prompt payment, followed by letters, emails, and phone calls. The process should also establish when it might be necessary to pass a debt over to a reliable commercial debt collection agency. Having a record of this process ensures that all the parties to a sale are aware of the terms and conditions and will also help to reduce the problems associated with late payment before they even occur. There are automated credit control solutions as well as additional technology that can be used to ensure that your cash collection becomes more efficient and timelier with less manual input required. Researching new clients. A small amount of due diligence beforehand can help to streamline the credit control process Undertaking a simple credit report on a new customer can help to reveal if they have had any issues making payments previously and identify which businesses pose the greatest risk to cash flow. Credit checks can be conducted quickly and cost effectively online and in most cases you will only need a company's trading name, registration number, address and key contact details. Undertaking these checks is no guarantee of payment, of course, but it allows a business to make an informed decision about the terms and conditions associated with each transaction. As part of this review process, it is worth creating a watch list of potential late payers who can be carefully monitored so that action can be taken to prevent late payment. We've previously assisted clients with some credit checks using various providers such as Experian and CreditSafe, but there are also some cloud apps which can do this, which we can access and assist with if businesses would like additional assistance with this credit control. Obtaining payment isn't just a process of, ma of making demands or threats. Creating a lasting positive relationship and clear channels of communication can also go a long way in helping to obtain timely payments doesn't hurt to make courtesy calls to confirm receipt of paperwork or in advance of the invoice due date. This shows that a business is friendly and professional and allows a customer to give prior warning of late payments. Being quick and being accurate. It isn't just the responsibility of customers to ensure payments aren't late. Ensuring your invoicing procedures are effective can make a massive difference. It is recommended that businesses send invoices as soon as orders are fulfilled, email or send invoices electronically rather than sending by post. Ensure that the invoice is addressed to the right person. Make sure that there are no mistakes in the invoices and confirm that the invoice has been received. Acting early prevents delay and helps to build a rapport with your customer. Incentivizing. Businesses struggle, struggling with late payments could look to add incentives to the credit control process. This could be something as simple as offering early settlement discounts to customers that are known for late payments that kick in when they pay within the agreed credit terms. While this may seem like rewarding bad behaviour, it may mean that your business is paid sooner. These incentives can also be incorporated into your pricing structures so the profit margins are not affected. Making payments easier. There's never been more choice when it comes to payment methods, so businesses should make sure that they offer as many as possible. This could include banks, credit, debit cards, cash, or online payments. If your business is continually blighted by late payments and you are struggling to deal with the burden of cash management, then it may make more sense and be more cost-effective to seek out professional support. You can do this by outsourcing your credit control and cash management. The fourth area that I'm going to cover is pricing. Many business owners already struggle with the difficulties of pricing. In some cases, setting prices by their competition, and in others, charging amounts randomly. Neither of these approaches is effective in a digital age where consumers can review prices instantly. By failing to grasp the importance of pricing when taking sales online, a business may unwittingly make their products or services less attractive. To help businesses with their pricing strategies, we will look below at some of the estimated established techniques that they can follow. 
Firstly, psychological pricing. Possibly one of the most commonly used forms of pricing, this dates back as late as the 1800s, but remains effective even to this day. At its core, psychological pricing relies on the strategic pricing of goods and services just below a nice round number. We've all seen it, the car dealership offering its latest model at 9999 or the old 99p store. Many businesses use this trick and consumers are aware of it, so is it still effective? And the simple answer is yes. Even though the price difference is negligible, irrational customers don't round up the price and they perceive the item to be cheaper than it actually is and are more inclined to buy. The importance of nine. Unbelievably, most people perceive a price ending in the number nine as better value and more cost effective. This, perfect, this perception of value even applies when an identical competitor product is priced lower. As proved in famous studies conducted by the University of Chicago and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology back in 2003. The simple strategy may seem ridiculous, but it has proven to work time and time again. Relative pricing. In this enlightened digital age, ensuring your price is relative to the rest of the market can be key, especially with the emergence of price checking apps. Knowing how much to charge relates to several factors, one of which has to be how much a competitor charges. However, this shouldn't be the driving force in setting an effective price. Constantly trying to charge less than a competitor will squeeze margins to potentially unsustainable levels and may lead to some consumers to think of your product as inferior. It is at this point where you may want to reconsider how your product or service is marketed. You may decide you want to be a premium or economy brand relative to your competitors and should then price accordingly. Sometimes a price is justified by lots of different factors, not just the service or product on offer. People will happily pay thousands for a Rolex that tells the time when a five pound watch will do just the same. The products fulfill the same role, but there are other forces at play that determine the price. The same applies online. And sometimes it can be down to things beyond the price. Even the look of a website or the services offered alongside products can make a difference in how much is charged. A business should therefore look at non-products and service changes it can make that will justify a higher price. Being different. When choosing a service or selecting a product, customers will rely on their own opinions of a product, which are entirely subjective, but they also rely on price, which is objective. Prices for similar or identical products can be easily compared and may be the, ter the determining factor. Where prices are identical, this can complicate the purchasing decision of customers, forcing them to rely on a subjective decision, which may mean that they do not decide to purchase anything at all. In sales, this is referred to as analysis paralysis and means both businesses lose out. By purposefully pricing differently to a competitor, you give customers a simple choice if they like or require the same services or products equally. This can help to ensure a sale. However, it might not fall in your favor. Finally, offering choice. Research has shown that by selling three products alongside each other, you subconsciously push customers towards the middle product. Therefore, if you strategically make the mid-price product more expensive, you can increase your average order value. Savvier sellers can then use this technique to develop a mid-priced offering that is more cost-effective and therefore more profitable. All of these pricing strategies rely on the way that customers perceive price and highlight that it can be one of the determining factors in a sale or order. This means that effectively adjusting your price could help increase sales and improve profitability. In today's modern online marketplace, businesses cannot sit back and leave prices static. They need to create a pricing strategy that adapts to the market and the needs of customers. This can be difficult to achieve alongside the other pressures of running a business. And it is why as a business expands online, seeking professional assistance can reap rewards. The fifth and final part is KPIs. The long-term success of any business depends on how it monitors and reacts to change. A key aspect of this task is key performance indicators or KPIs. When it comes to tracking your business day to day, there are certain financial KPIs you need to be aware of if you're going to maintain a healthy business and drive growth. KPIs help you to measure here and now, but they may not always show you unexplored opportunities or, or the longer term picture. So besides tracking the KPIs that help you measure performance today, look at the following KPIs to plan for the future. Financial KPIs will vary from business to business, depending on your goals, but businesses should keep these five elements in mind. 
Sales growth is one of the most basic parameters of success for any business. Sales growth is the increase or decrease in a company's sales between two periods. It is normally communicated as a percentage, and the growth demonstrates the degree to which your company's revenue has grown or shrunk over time. It can be calculated annually, quarterly or monthly, and it will show you both positive and negative changes in revenue growth. Sources of income. You should also analyse your revenue streams, including revenue per client and service, to determine profitable customers and segments so that you can make informed decisions about your investments. Revenue concentration. You need to ensure that the majority of your income isn't reliant on too small a client concentration. If all your work comes from just one or two clients, what happens if they fail? If this is already the case, then please take immediate action to diversify your client portfolio to protect yourself. Profitability over time. By tracking your expenses and income, you can then compile profit and loss reports, which analyse your business performance over a period and may point out unnecessary expenses. Working capital. Working capital is simply the money that helps you to fund your day-to-day -day operating costs. This can be used as a buffer to tide you over when clients take ages to pay or to capitalise on work that helps your business grow. These are the financial KPIs to consider. However, you may also want to consider non-financial KPIs, such as employee retention, net promoter scores, which is how likely customers are to recommend your business or brand to others, and also new clients or customers, all of which can help to capture any strengths or weakness of a business if measured regularly. During this presentation, I've covered some key points for you to consider, most of which focus on the monitoring of your finances and the benefits of having a clear picture of your company's health during these more challenging times. However, on their own, they aren't much use unless they are employed alongside a plan that helps your business to grow and flourish. During these uncertain times, future planning may seem like an impossible task, but if you are armed with the right figures and data, you should be able to invest and adapt with a greater degree of confidence. Understandably, some businesses are choosing to do nothing, but by not taking steps alongside these action, by <laughs> try that again, but by not taking action, these companies risk losing out to competitors who are willing to take steps using the business intelligences they have acquired. Having a strategy based on real-time information could be the difference between success and failure in 2021, which is why we are here and ready to help. We understand that businesses face a great number of difficulties, but by working with a trusted advisor, you not only get a clear picture of your current financial health, but you can also begin bit by bit to plan for the future beyond COVID-19 and the other challenges ahead. During the last year, we have worked with businesses to keep them informed of all the help available from the government. Plus, we've helped them develop strategies to survive despite the uncertainties they faced. There are some key things which you may wish to consider for your business when thinking of the year ahead. One key area we would recommend is a business health check to review whether there are any areas you need to address right now to be able to understand any additional work or possibly reports to help you operate more efficiently. I've suggested some solutions throughout this webinar, such as cloud-based accounting te technology or apps that could assist your business in, in ensuring you are set for success in 2021. Following today, if you would like to discuss any of this in more detail, our experienced team can assist with the points covered and much, much more. We can also offer a free one hour consultation in which we can discuss any areas of concern you may have or would like to look at in more detail. Ultimately, understanding and reporting regularly on the areas I've discussed today will help you in the months ahead and will allow you to flex your strategy if you need to by understanding the financial numbers of your business. I would now like to offer you the chance to ask me any questions you may have on the topics I've covered. My colleague Suzanne has been watching the Q&A for me, so I'm just going to ask Suzanne to unmute and see if there are any questions that have popped up. Um, just looking at the questions, I can't see any that have come through on the um, Q&A, but we did have a couple before the webinar um, that came through, um, which was one of the first questions was, um, how do I understand which is the best cloud accounting solution for my business as there are so many different ones to choose from? That's a really good question, actually. And we do get that question quite regularly. Um, the simple answer is there is no one best solution. It will entirely depend on your circumstances and your business. Now, there are some softwares out there which are much better off to dealing with stock. And that stock could even be whether it is one, one unit or whether it is multiple items that go into one stock line. 
Alternatively, there are others which are much better at dealing with foreign exchange if you have multiple transactions, multiple divisions. So the best answer is if you've got any questions about wanting to move onto a cloud-based system, I would suggest getting in touch with either myself or if you have a, a, an existing contact at Seymour Taylor, contact one of us and we can talk you through your, your individual circumstances and work out what's the best route for you. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Lisa. And um, the other one that had come through in advance was, um, are there any templates to use or follow for tracking my KPIs? Again, it's it's a different one depending on your individual circumstances. Um, you could, if you're looking to start out doing KPIs, you could look to do it quite simply using Microsoft Excel. You can get the the basic set up via various different various different spreadsheets quite quite simply by doing exports of your data into Excel. Alternatively, some of the software providers, the cloud based ones, you can set them up automatically within there so that they can then run. So there are many different options depending on depending on your your technological capabilities um, and quite what you want to see out of the, the data there as well. Okay, I can't see any other questions that have come through on the Q&A, Lisa. So I think that's that's it on the question front. Perfect. I'm just checking if anything's come through to me directly as well. That no, doesn't look like anything has come through directly. Great. So finally, to find out how we can help you tackle some of the challenges ahead, you may want to arrange a free one hour consultation with either myself or a member of our team. You can contact me after this webinar or call us on 01494 552 100. Please also feel free to visit the website, which is www.stca.co.uk for lots of helpful information and support. You can also connect with us on LinkedIn or follow us on Twitter. Thank you for attending and goodbye.